Allison here from Paradis, the minimalistic transformative apparel line. And I'm here with Erin Robertson today, my friend and winner of Project Runway. And she's going to be one of our badass featured mavens. And I'm just gonna ask her a few questions. So, Erin, how would you describe yourself in one <laughs> sentence or less? <laughs> oh my God, I can't, it's like asking my favorite. Well, I do have a favorite color, kind of. Yeah. I don't have any favorites, but... Um, wow, it's like a little hard to describe me in one sentence. I'm a little, you know... I think I'm pretty... I'm, like, confident, strong, uh, playful, and uh, really serious, but also not. Mm-hmm. And can you please explain what you do? Yes. So, I'm a, primarily a fashion designer, and um, right now just focusing on um, creating a business with, um, you know, kind of almost like debunking what sustainability, like when you say sustainability or what that is, just kind of, um, cause I've been thinking about that so much about like how to create a sustainable clothing line, but then I'm also like, what is even sustainable? So for me, I've been creating this business that is fun and exciting, but also really thinks a lot about sustainability, about, you know, not having things overseas, like thinking about where the material comes from with a, a hardcore focus on integrating fashion, art, and technology together. Incredible. And so where did you first get your inspiration to move along this path? Well, before I went to Mass Art, I, went, I was a dental assistant at Harvard for five years. So, and I was also doing research over at the new research building. And um, I was doing fashion before that when I lived in Utah, but I didn't think that I could do it as a profession. I kind of didn't have that exposure to be like, oh, you can make money as an artist or like make mm -hmm. it a profession. So um, just kind of like after getting exposed to other people that are doing things, I kind of got inspired to be like, wait, I can pursue this. Yeah. Was there like a certain catalyst, like like one event that happened that you're like, you know what, I'm going for this. Like screw being a dental assistant. I, yeah, I was living at the nunnery. <laughs> very vivid like afternoon my room was really messy and I was living at this place it was like Our Lady's Guild House which is owned and ran by Catholic nuns but oh wow when I moved to Boston I didn't have a lot of money so I had to go to this place was like four hundred dollars on like a, a month and it was right in Kenmore so I just turned 21 I thought I wanted to be a dentist so I was going to Bunker Hill Community College and I was like taking science classes and I just remember, like, I don't know, there's just like, I don't know exactly what it was specifically, but just like something hit me where I knew that I didn't want to be a dentist. I was like, what am I doing? Like, this isn't me. Mm -hmm. And so I, I really think it was exposure to a lot of, a lot of things, like just making new friends that were artistic. And I worked at a clothing store. I worked at G-Star Raw. So just getting to know people and seeing that, you know, opening my eyes to new things made me realize that I could do it. So. Yeah, being inspired by all the people around yeah, you. Like yeah. Boston has a really good community, so I think that that's a big inspiration for me. And then what inspired you to uh, apply for Project Runway? Oh man, that was a joke. Yeah. <laughs> just, I don't know, graduating college, graduating art school, and I knew I didn't want to go into the fashion industry. Um, I don't, there's a lot of the way that it's ran, I don't really want to be part of it. Um, like how many fashion lines there are and just the excess. Uh, and I don't know, even that exclusivity of, of like, we're fashion, we're like so much cooler than everybody else. And I don't see fashion like that. So, um, and I, and everyone had been telling me to apply for years, but I never was able to because I was in school. And then I was like, this is, I'm gonna do it like just for fun. Mm -hmm. Like someone was like, you would be great on TV. And I was like, so I kind of switched my thought of like also thinking about Project Runway not as going on there as like a designer necessarily, even though that's what it is, but thinking about it more of like a personality sort of thing and kind of blending the two together. Mm -hmm. And so then what do you see fashion as then, like from your perspective? Well, I mean, I love fashion, I think mm -hmm. it's great, but I think that the fashion industry, like fast fashion, and I mean, I'm a total victim of fast fashion. Like I, I do it and it's like, I'm weaning off of it because it's, it's a hard thing to get to stop. Um, but I also think that it's like having these conversations about how bad fast fashion is, like how bad it is for the environment and how bad it is for like social issues, you know, just like who, the people that it affects. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that um, for me, one of the interests is just having those kind of those like that being a conversation in part with like clothing. So when someone buys a garment, they're buying 
a story rather than buying just a garment. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I think just like educating people that, you know, what's going, what's really going on. I mean, I definitely apply that in, in parodies. Yeah, and, oh, definitely. Yeah, and because it's, it's awful, especially when after big oil, the fashion industry is the second dirtiest industry it's in the world. so sad. Yeah. And it's, and it's like glamorous. Yeah. It's so dirty. Exactly. And it should be more of uh, how we're portraying ourselves in some way. And if that's what we're putting on our bodies, what is that saying? Yeah, exactly. I was like reading something about how, you know, people care so much when they think about what they eat and how that's like a big thing. And obviously people are more aware of that, but they're not as aware of like what they put on their body. I think it will, will catch on it's soon. It's catching on, but yeah. I think it's just like, it's one, it's one of those things that just like having, again, like having the conversations and, mm -hmm. and, and promoting that, so. Yeah, it trickles down eventually. Yeah. Like you even see, like I was living in Southern California and seeing like how like people were clean eating there for a while. And yeah. then it, every time I'd come home to Boston, I'd be like, oh wow, people are caring more and more and more and more. Yeah. <laughs> so it definitely happens. <laughs> so um, who out of people in your network or family, like who inspired you the most to just like really go for it and everything you do and you're a very you know unique person and you're just yourself and authentic and like where do you think that it's came hard from? to say just one person yeah because it's it's really like I wouldn't see myself just being with like like Jordan for example yeah like I love her so much and her and I have such great conversations and we kind of help each other out where each other lacks in certain ways and um, and do just like emotional conversations like that have nothing to do with work but just life and um, like she's amazing, but I also, you know, my manager Jennifer, like I couldn't imagine doing this without her, where she plays a huge role where it's not necessarily artistically, but it's also that side of starting a business. Um, and really like everyone and things, people like what you're doing in Boston and having that Thank and you. like the community, like that is all like super important. So I guess speaking of Boston, <laughs> what are some of your favorite places to go to in the city? Um, I love the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum. Mm -hmm. That's probably my favorite place. Um, I mean, I love like the, one of the reasons why I love Boston is like for the summer, for like the beaches mm -hmm. and going to Sydney Beach and hanging out there. Central Square has a lot of really cool places like brick and mortar, mm -hmm. and um, I like the field over there. Alden and Harlow is delicious. And so I guess in having all of your success with the show and everything that you're doing, why do you stay in Boston instead of going to like a hub like New York or LA? Like what, what keeps you here? Because most people, they, yeah. they hit it big and then they're like, later Boston. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that there's like a huge, um, I think there's a huge area for growth for like again, art and technology, kind of like what I'm really focused in. And the fact that MIT is right down the street, mm -hmm. like I'm gonna do a collaboration with uh, this guy, Jife, who is 3D printing fur. It's just like a silicone, wow. but it's it's great because you don't you can have like this like soft material, but it doesn't kill an animal. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of cool to, to have them like, that's right down the street. Like no one has that. I've never seen that in the fashion industry and it's right there. So um, it's kind of cool to be able to have that. And you know, at the same time, like in the technology world, they don't have access to artists. So I think that there's like a really cool opportunity for artists to be collaborating with scientists and engineers. So that's for me, one of the reasons. And then aside from the you know, community, so. Mm -hmm. What are your beauty rituals? My beauty rituals? Yeah. <laughs> They're not that impressive. No? <laughs> um, I mean, I mainly, like, my, my main things that I focus on are, like, nails and hair. Mm -hmm. So I'm always, like, up on that. My friend Patty does my hair, and she's, like, I'm obsessed with her. Um, and my friend Dana cuts it, so. And then um, I'm recently relocating where I get my nails done. Because I used to go in Central Square because it was down the street, but now I'm, like, where? Mm -hmm. um, I'm getting my first facial tomorrow. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> oh, there is one product that I love. It's called Exfoliate mm -hmm. um, by Kate Somerville. It's amazing. It's just like this like green chemical exfoliant. And I guess for you, how would versatile clothing help you like through the day? Well, I mean, I think that versatility and anything being modular has, is like the future. That's why like mm -hmm. the stuff that you're doing is super cool because you think about, like I even like, I kind of related to my studio too. Like I thought about how I can change it around and move it places. And the same should be with clothes. So that way, you know, you can buy one garment, but wear it different ways. 
like I made this coat when I was a junior and it like zips off and it can be like a little short jacket and then you can zip it up and it could be like a high-waisted skirt and so that I mean it, you have like I think that thinking modular is really smart in the way of the future maybe I, I yeah. mean definitely yeah <laughs> Um, and I guess one last question, is there anything else you'd like to leave us with? Any words oh, of wisdom, yeah. <laughs> anything inspiring for all of the ladies trying to do big things? Go on a reality TV show and win a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> it's really helpful. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, 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 I think, I think just like, I've, I've worked really hard. I really mm-hmm. depend and I've, I've depended on myself, like I didn't rely on anyone like, to take care of me, so I've worked really hard and I think that that's really important to remember as a woman is just make sure that you can take care of yourself and you're working hard for you, for what you want to be doing. Um, and I think through that like you can attract like a lot of really good people that will want to work and have like, and then do teamwork together, so. Mm-hmm. So be independent, work hard, independent. be a total badass. Yeah. Yeah, that's the key to happiness. And we're going to reality TV show.